I officially hate command blocks. <laughs> so we're back on this screen again and you can notice a few things. So there's a few spikes. What I've done is I've set these timers to uh, one tick out of 60 because they're on three second timers so far. Uh, three ticks out of 60, five ticks out of 60, seven ticks out of 70. So that's the four lines spaced one column apart. So the first one is the lowest peak, then this one's slightly higher, and these two are atrocious. And what I've found through testing is the state of every command block in this little tower is the issue. So because I have them arranged next to each other, every time this updates, checks this, it makes this block update, which makes this command block update. So what that means is this column, which we've already swapped to needing redstone, and this side, which is always active, is that slight difference in the two peaks. Uh, furthermore, they're all set to 14 blocks high. So if I go ahead and just mess up this. Wait for it. But as you can see, the redstone is the same height. But the slight difference is simply because of this column and the fact that in that one tick, it's activating, I don't know how many times. I, I was pretty sure command blocks activate once a tick, so the fact that the redstone clears in one tick should mean only activates once, but the issue is it doesn't. It maybe three or four times. When this block updates, it checks. When this block's on, it checks. When this block turns off, it checks. Something like that. Go ahead and delete these. What I've found is if we go ahead and swap these to redstone as well, you'll notice a drastic change in both sides as they slowly head downwards. We're almost out of the red. Didn't need to go any higher, but we can go to the top. So they're orange now. And they should be green? No, both yellow. Yellow's fine. So everything's set to redstone now. This side is still 14. Uh, we can turn this side back up to an extra four, so it should be 18. And still compare the two. So oddly enough, you can see they're about even, despite the extra four. So it doesn't make a huge difference as long as you have it set to redstone compared to this side, which is still awfully in the red. In fact, uh, if I increase this by one more to this X, what we should see is an increase. It's going back to red, it looks like. Yep. So what I want to do is, oh, is it back to orange? Oh, it is back to orange. Isn't that interesting? So they're equivalent, even though they're slightly higher. What I want to aim for is in green. So if we go ahead and change this to say 10. We're now in the green, not really great enough. And nine is 10 box square, because it's negative one. So about that level is good. Uh, the issue is figuring out whether or not this works on a wide range of computers. So I'll probably test the map on my crappier laptop but the issue is now, once we figure out the limit of command blocks we can run within one tick, we have to squeeze everything in the map into 60 ticks, since that's our lowest denominator of seconds. So I've gone ahead and changed a few of these. Uh, if I could get out of this menu for a second. So we've still got the three second one, then 12 seconds instead of 10, 30 seconds, minutes, Going really the two minute, now we have a five minute and a 30 minute. And these all have to be divisible by 20 and three. Because since three seconds is our lowest denominator, so they don't overlap at any point and we can space out all the command blocks within these 60 ticks. So between the two bars, there's 60 ticks there. And what we want to do is figure out the number of command blocks we can use and then plan accordingly so that that amount of command blocks are activated every uh, every tick within those 60 ticks. 
The other issue we're going to run into is everything going around in the outside world. Because if we cap out the ticks with the command blocks, then the ability for people to build, space out, uh, have different entities spawn becomes an issue. So in fact, we need to aim a bit lower than, than 10. Uh, it's probably going to be best if we do it in multiples of five, which would be 10 blocks considering these are double. So it's now very low. We'll swap, we'll switch these off for a second. So we need to clear this. I'll just put the equal signs back. We can clear that one. We space this over another two blocks. So it encompasses both sides. Same with this one. We're back in the red, are we? No, so we're in yellow now, which is also interesting. Uh, it should be 20 blocks. So to get down to 10, which we can't really do, it's four. So if we, if we decrease it by one, let's see how that does. Now we don't need to worry about that one at the moment. No, we decrease it by another one. So this is three blocks, this would be 12. We're in that green margin. So it seems like we should be aiming for 10 blocks activated in a tick. I do want to play around and see if there's any ways to sort of clean up the commands. The main issue is the fact that it's checking every entity. If we can figure out a way to clean up the at E by running a different parameter first to limit the selection, uh, would that be in a set location around players maybe? So if we do execute at all within it and then use the distance of say 20 blocks around the player, we might be able to limit the entity selection. I'm not sure how substantially that will affect things. I might set up a testing thing with the same commands and just see how it goes. Right, so all set up. We've copied 10 blocks over and already we found some interesting data. So first off, these all set to always active like we showed before. It's the first major hurdle. When they're always active, you can see the giant spike. We change them back to redstone. That spike diminishes a little. But most importantly, if we get rid of contact, then it's decreased even further. So even though having redstone block on this block does not power the block in the sense that it doesn't run through it, I don't know what the terminology is. I'm pretty sure it's powered. So when you have a block and then say a repeater running into it, the block becomes powered and emits power. When you just put a redstone block next to a block, only that block is activated because the redstone block is a powered block carrying the current through to the next, uh, any adjacent blocks. So what that means is regardless of this state, as well as the always active state, it checks. So whenever this block updates, this block checks if it itself has been updated even though it has no reason to. So this, while frustrating, is uh, very good to know because it means some cascades like, for instance, these blocks which I want to use in the future, I might have to completely change. The only thing that we might need to check is, for instance, this block is running into that block. So if we stack, oh, we can't even do it on top. Uh, under, I guess, then. <laughs> don't really want to demolish my build. Anyway, so if we put them underneath, where they're not running together, and paste in the commands, do we get any blips? The answer looks like no, which is less frustrating. Um, the arrows on these always confuse me because my understanding from playing around with them is you don't care about this side, you care about the backside. So the backside is what's most important. If the backside's facing into the block, then you have your issues. So if we were to, for instance, these underneath facing down, 
Okay, so now commands. Do we get any blips? No, it looks like. So, we need to either space this out, because if we space it out, we can run more blocks. Because mentally speaking, we're going to count this out. This does not activate 10. Every time this runs on these two columns, it activates this line, this line, and the adjacent line. So if we split up the line, it's another way to minimize things. Uh, the question though, that I'm really curious about is does it affect normal command blocks? Because we know for a fact, repeating command blocks are, are the most awful. They update no matter what. Conditional seems to update as long as there's an adjacent block that's being updated. The question is, do impulse? Because if impulse do, this line is going to be an issue. And then these giant towers that I've built are also going to be a fundamental issue. The problem with these is the way I have these set up, you've got blue, green, yellow, and red, like a fuse. So every time the timer ticks down there, it activates either blue, green, yellow, or red which is a similar system as this tower and one we might swap over to a timer base, but this generates RNG and we'll get to that in another video, but it's important for this tower. So the main thing we need to figure out is, is this gonna cause an issue? If this is causing an issue, then we need to delete them. And thank the Lord, it looks like it's not even if we set them to always active, well, always active, doesn't matter. So fundamentally, what this is showing me is both chain command blocks and repeating command blocks are horse crap, a literal piles of horse crap. In no system where you wanna build a giant map that uses a lot of command blocks, do you ever want to use an abundant amount of repeating and ch chain command blocks? This system, will be accomplished much better if I were to replace these inner towers with impulse command blocks set to run at redstone with this generating redstone, which is very frustrating because the whole point of chain and command, a uh, chain and repeating command blocks I thought was the utility and the fact that they cause us less lag, but they update way too often. The fact that it updates whenever this block updates rather than, well, you can understand why. Because it's checking if this is a redstone block or a powered block. That's the main crux. This apparently does not check. This only updates whenever it's powered, which is mind blowing. Because why would you not use the same system as this? The only side you should be checking is the side behind the arrow because that's the side that relies on conditional. And furthermore, should only be checking it if it's conditional. If it's unconditional, I could understand it checking every block around it. But regardless, that means these systems, this one should be fine, thank God. Uh, in fact, we could just test it quickly. If we swap the timer to a three second timer. I think I've got that running on one, which is Five. This one, put to five and change this to the three second timer. Hopefully it works. Should work. Uh, why is it two S's? Because I click the three. So if these are on, this system, which has far more command blocks than that single tower, is not causing any lag, it looks like. I'm just going to mess up this command to make sure it is generating the redstone blocks. Yeah, so it is generating the redstone blocks. Simple fact that it's all impulse command blocks generates, well, next to no lag. We turn this one back on, most frustratingly. And this is set to one, so that's fine too. So this is now that lag spike, which it should be, what do we even have it set to? We have it set to hardly anything. We have it set to three blocks. So 12 blocks compared to, I think this is 80. So 80 command blocks 
running at one tick, because they're all impulse, is significantly less impactful than a, it's not even, it's, if you discount these, it's eight. Eight repeating command blocks. And then don't get me started on, uh, sorry, eight chain command blocks. And then the repeating command blocks are less, uh, more atrocious. Oh, sorry, it's very frustrating because you have this idea in mind and the fact that you have to rip it all apart. I have to rip out, oh, I don't actually, because I can just change them. Thank God, I forgot about that feature. But I do have to work on different systems. And I still want to implement the limit because I'm sure there's a cap. If I had uh, hundreds and hundreds of impulse command blocks running at the same tick, I'm sure it would impact lag. The simple fact that it can run appropriately without that. Ugh. Anyway, this, this jumbled rant, hopefully, hopefully it's somewhat informal. I'll probably put uh, wait, the too much information, TD something, 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 TDY, blah, 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 in the descriptions to explain a bit better. But I just wanted to share this finding because I've been working with command blocks for a while. And the simple fact that I shouldn't be working with these two command blocks at all it is just mind blowing to me. Obviously limited features are fine. I am curious though, if this system, for instance, this one as well, would be better if I run uh, the first command block generating a line of redstone instead. But yeah, significantly frustrating. I hope you enjoyed the findings and didn't mind listening to my rant too much. Thanks for watching. See ya.